the web. I forgot to bring the URL. Uh, the drafts of this book, uh, a draft of this book is available on the web from arxiv.org. And you go to the papers on history and overview of mathematics and look up my name. Uh, actually, if you just go to Google, probably, you can probably find it very quickly. Google is the source of all knowledge. This book will uh, be published uh, the end of September, amazingly enough. Um, a major New York City publish, a major New York publisher is publishing this book, which is a, nevertheless a serious book. Um, um, and I have just corrected the, uh, the, the first pass proofs, so I now believe that this book will actually exist. I, uh, I brought a printout of the, uh, of the proofs. So um, what other names can I mention in this tendency? Uh, in Italy, for example, there is uh, Paola Zizi. There's Seth Lloyd in the United States. Uh, another name, uh, always good to include a Nobel Prize winner. I don't know how to pronounce this, but he's, uh, I believe, has a Nobel Prize in physics in the Netherlands. So what is this, what is this, this digital philosophy? Every one of us has a different, a different version of these ideas, but I view it as an emerging school. And um, what is the, uh, the basic idea of, of, this, of, of all these, uh, uh, all these uh, of all of us? Um, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll explain that. So the first thing I'd like to do is continue, though, discussing Turing's original 1936 paper. And we're talking about computable real numbers. Now, the interesting, the idea of a computable real number, it's a number which I can calculate with more and more precision. From a geometrical point of view, a real number is the simplest thing on Earth, right? It's the, uh, a point on a line, the distance of two points on a line, for example. You know, from geometrical intuition, a real number is, is, is very immediate and, and obvious. But from the point of view, arithmetical point of view, real numbers are, very, are quite problematical because they have an infinite precision. They are numbers, measurements with an infinite degree of precision, an infinite number of digits. They're an infinite amount of information is really the problem. So what is obvious from a geometrical point of view of geometrical intuition turns out to be really uh, quite troublesome uh, from the point of view of a digital computer, which only has a finite amount of information. Now, uh, so Turing, in his paper in 1936, defines a real number to be computable if you can calculate it digit by digit. And he points out that all the obvious numbers that you think of, like pi and e and uh, solutions of algebraic equations, are all computable real numbers. But the interesting thing about this paper um, is that he points out that there are uncomputable real numbers. And the way he gets an uncomputable real number, the, the, the important thing in his argument, is that the set of all computer programs is countable or a denumerable infinity, which means you can make a list of a first computer program, a, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and therefore you can also imagine a mental list of, of all the computable real numbers. And the computable real numbers, therefore, are only a countable or denumerable infinity, denumerable, you know, I'm talking about Cantorian theory of infinite sets. This is a very small infinity. Uh, um, this, the computable reals are as numerous, basically, as the positive integers, one, two, three, four, five, because you can write them in a list. You just imagine the list of all possible computer programs, and that's a denumerable or accountable infinity. So if you apply something called Cantor's diagonal argument to the list of all computable reals, you get an uncomputable real. What you do is you imagine these real numbers written out in uh, digit, uh, you know, in digit by digit, and you take the first digit of the first number, the first after the decimal point, the second digit after the decimal point, or the second, the third of the third, the fourth of the fourth, the fifth of the fifth, you change them, and, and you put them, these changed digits together into a new real number. This new real number has to be different from every computable real. It can't be on the list, because its nth digit differs from the uh, nth digit of the nth real, on the nth computable real, therefore you have an uncomputable real. Okay, so this shows that there is at least one uncomputable real, and actually a, a lot of them, and Turing does not point this out, 
But it's actually, uh, so this is, I think, the real shock value of this paper, that Turing invents the computer as a mathematical notion and then discovers there is something a computer can't do right away because there are, uh, there are real numbers that cannot be calculated. Now, the problem is really an, an awful lot worse than Turing points out in his paper. Um, once you know that the computable reals are uh, countable or denumerable infinity, that you can have a list of them, it actually turns out that a real number is uncomputable with probability one, and a real number is computable with probability zero. In other words, if you pick a real number between zero and one at random, uniform distribution, it is possible that you will get a computable real, but it's infinitely unlikely. So why? Well, there's, this has to do with something called uh, Borel measure or probability theory, and the way the argument is, is very simple. You imagine this list of all programs, and then you get a list of all, you imagine a list of all computable reals in the size of their programs, and you, you take the unit interval from zero to one. I don't care about real numbers with, uh, which are, uh, you know, outside this interval. And this unit interval has length one, obviously. And I want to show you that the computable reals are an, a very infinitesimally small part of this. So what I do is I take the first computable real and I put a covering on it, and I'll make that covering be length epsilon over 2. In other words, I put a, a little interval, which has this length epsilon over 2, over the first computable real. And then I take the second computable real and I put a smaller interval. I'll make that of length epsilon over 4. I cover it with an interval of a length epsilon over 4. And then epsilon over 8, epsilon over 16, the covering interval gets smaller and smaller. And of course, if you add all these covering intervals, their total length is going to be exactly epsilon. And I can make epsilon as small as I like. So I've covered all the computable reals in the unit interval with a covering that I can make as small as I want. And, but the, but, you know, the total length here is unity. So this shows you how insignificant the computable reals are. You know, they really don't count. The only problem is, of course, that every real number that we've ever seen and that we'll ever be able to use is a computable real. The uncomputable reals are, in a way, a mathematical fantasy and a philosophical nightmare, actually, you see. And to make it worse, because they're saying that most real numbers we cannot really grab or touch. They exist only in a, as a sense of a, as a fantasy but they don't have any concrete reality in the sense of being computable. Now, Emile Borel actually um, was close to these ideas. Uh, I'm using ideas that he pioneered, this notion of... Uh, uh, um, Borel uh, actually has two more remarks of this sort. Um, so let me tell you about them. In 1927, to, trying to show you how unreal real numbers are. Um, you know, that in a way they... In 1927, Borel came up with a real number, which in a way is a reductio ad absurdum of the notion of a real number. And uh, it's a know-it-all number. I'll tell you about that. And then I'll tell you about another problem that I think Borel came up with in his 1956. So what is Borel's know-it-all number from 1927? Well, the idea, Borel's idea is this. The set of all uh, yes-no questions that one can ask in English or in French, you pick your language, is also a countable or denumerable infinity. Because you can imagine a list of all possible questions, because you can have a list of all possible texts in any language. You just go through all possible strings of symbols in that, 